So I'm scrolling through the news tonight and came across a USA Today article that I'm going to use as an example of how left media can spin a story. This um, story was published oh, somewhere on here. It actually did just say it was published seven hours ago. Interesting how that just, oh, there it goes. Published eight hours ago. You can see it right there. Eight hours ago. So um, their headline, Giuliani turns over alleged Hunter Biden laptop to authorities in Delaware. So the FBI already came out last night and said that they had the original laptop and that it is not allegedly Hunter's. It is Hunter's. And they also came out with uh, a statement that it is not related to Russia disinformation or any other international disinformation campaign. So again, USA Today publishes this eight hours ago, but yet last night the FBI already came out and said they have Hunter Biden's laptop and they've had it since December 19th. And... Um, it is not part of a disinformation campaign from a foreign country. So then as we go through, you know, the very first picture they have here is President Trump seemed to try to rattle Joe Biden by bringing up Biden's son Hunter. Notice that they don't have a photo of Joe Biden ripping the press reporters who try to ask him a question about it. They don't have that. It's anti-Trump. Um, then we go on the very first sentence. Rudy Giuliani's efforts to tarnish Joe Biden's presidential campaign. Keep in mind, Rudy Giuliani was a hero during 9-11. How many of these um, newspapers, if you go back and look, treated him as a hero? They also treated him as a hero when he was going after the mafia, and the drug cartels. He brought a lot of them down. He was a hero then. But now he's just uh, tarnishing Joe Biden. Um, and again, then they say here, uh, they say what he said was Hunter Biden's laptop. The FBI already confirmed yesterday that they have the laptop and confirmed it's Hunter's and um, that it's not part of a disinformation campaign. Then they go on. Um, the other thing in the stories that were previously published, I don't know why USA Today is so far behind, but the co these are copies that uh, Giul Giuliani has. This was not the original. So this story makes it sound like it's the hard drive. It's not the original. The original from my understanding, was turned over to the FBI December 2019. Uh, or maybe it was vice versa, and now I can't remember. They got a copy, and this is the original, or the FBI got the original, and this is a copy. Either way, they're the same thing. So this article is making it sound like this is a brand new thing that just happened seven hours ago, eight hours ago by the time I get to posting this, um, which is just not true. Um, then they go on to say, uh, let's see, we've seen multiple, right here, we've seen uh, multiple reports. The FBI is looking into whether these claims are credible. Again, they just published this a few hours ago. Yesterday, the FBI came out with a statement um, as well as, I believe it was the Justice Department, that they were definitely not part of a smear campaign from a foreign interest like Russia. So they've already said this yesterday. Why is USA Today just now putting this in an article seven or eight hours ago? Then they go on to uh, call the New York Post a tabloid, whereas if you go look at prior stories by them, they've quoted them as a reputable source. But for this purpose with this story, which could go against Biden, 
now they're no longer a news publication. They are a tabloid. Uh, and again, right here, this very first sentence that's underlined, FBI investigates possible disinformation. The FBI already came out yesterday and confirmed it is not part of a disinformation campaign. Um, then they quote a spokesperson from the FBI's Baltimore office, which declined to confirm or deny. They're not the ones investigating it. So obviously they're going to decline to confirm or deny because they're not the office that's investigating it. This should be common sense, but articles like this, reporters like this, publications like this, just hope that you're stupid. Um, then they go on to the story about the repair guy. Um, now here they did call the New York Post a publication instead of a tabloid. At least I'll give them points for that. Um, it goes on to say how it talks about the 2015 emails. Um, there was a lot more that came out besides that. Uh, there was additional things about the money, who was going to get it. Um, since then, there's been other emails that have come out from Hunter Biden's business partner, who again, that news came out two days ago, and this article was written seven hours ago. They're not noting it. But Hunter, Hunter Biden's business partner gave permission to two other investigating uh, reporters gave them his login for his Gmail account, which I believe it said had 26,000 emails, but they've begun going through those. And some of those emails outline the millions of dollars that Hunter requested from China. There's several other countries involved. Um, in addition to that, some of the recipients um, and other people on these emails have already come forward yesterday confirming that those emails are valid and that the contents of the emails that they were copied on were valid emails that actually took place. Um, here's another interesting story. Biden campaign says no meeting as alleged by the New York Post ever took place. That's not what they said. What they said was that they checked Joe Biden's official calendar and that there was no meeting that took place. They clearly said they checked Biden's official calendar. Well, does anyone really think if he's going to have a meeting with one of these associates of Hunter's um, that he's going to put it on his official White House calendar? I don't think so. The other thing they've uh, neglected to add in here is there's already Secret Service, uh, all the Secret Service detail uh, Travel reports have already been confirmed, and those are published online. You can find them on many news resources, um, and those confirmed several of the activities um, where they were along with Hunter until there became a point that Hunter discontinued his Secret Service detail. Evidently, he didn't want them along as witnesses. So it's interesting. They say no meeting ever took place. That's not actually true. What they said was, they checked his official schedule and there was no meeting. So again, more misleading information. Um, then they say FBI authorities were investigating whether Russian influence. Again, this has already been uh, published yesterday that the FBI and I believe it was Justice Department came forward with statements that they can confirm that the data on the laptop hard drive is not part of a disinformation campaign. Um, this bit here about the New York Times publishing it and the reporter didn't want to put his name. I can't speak to that. I have not researched that tidbit yet. I do find it's interesting though too that then they, the links they put in here is about Trump being behind. Um, you know, this picture of Rudy Giuliani that he's pausing while addressing the reporters. Again, a few years ago, um, this man was a hero to USA Today, not only for his actions as a leader 
during our 9-11 crisis where we were attacked. Um, but they also promoted him as a leader who brought our country together back when everyone remembered. Um, and they also had many stories about when he was bringing the drug cartels down. So again, up until now, he's been a hero. Uh, let's see what else is on here. And this whole thing, last year Trump sought information and that was the center of impeachment. Well, of course, when they see this much detail going on, um, one thing that, you know, uh, President, Vice President Biden can't seem to answer is a simple question. Your son was a drug addict, fired from many jobs. You got him into the military. He got discharged, and I forget the exact classification, but it was not an honorable discharge. He was actually supposed to get a dishonorable discharge, and Joe Biden stepped in and at least got him this other classification. Um, Correct me in my comments, actually, some of my military friends, if you can chime in in the comments and let me know what that was called. But it was not an honorable discharge. And then all of a sudden, after all of that, this guy goes out and he's able to get a job. Originally, they were saying $50,000 a month. One of Joe Biden's interviews, he actually admitted, and I saw this um, just this week, he admitted that he was making $83,000 a month. Um, serving on these boards. Uh, who do you know that has been fired repeatedly from multiple jobs, has been in and out of rehab, admitted drug addict, and, you know, I, you know, blessings for him on that, anyone trying to fight that. I don't share this information because I'm trying to throw him under the bus for being a drug addict. That's an awful thing. Many people I know have family members who deal with it and it's difficult and it's very hard. It's the other story. To me, the bigger story is not Hunter Biden. To me, the bigger story is Joe Biden who covered for his son and also allowed him, even encouraged him to get into these business dealings. You know, it wouldn't have been too hard for him to say, hey, Hunter, I hear you got this job. I don't think it's good. One, for your reputation as my son, it's certainly not good for my reputation as a vice president. It certainly won't reflect well on our president, President Barack Obama. Um, it won't help us get reelected if this comes out when Hillary's up next term for reelection. This could really hurt the Democratic Party, the current president, me as vice president. It could really hurt our message. That would have been easy for Joe Biden to do, but he didn't. He let Hunter continue with these business dealings. And then now it's come out, you know, there's, there's documented wire, this, this $3.5 million wire transfer from the wife of the Moscow mayor in Russia is documented. Wire transfers that large are documented. That's already out there. Yeah, and they're not showing it. Don Lemon's not showing it. Rachel Maddow's not showing it. But those are out there. You can go find them. Um, and they're, they're, they're from the um, official uh, FOIA requests uh, that, that were done, I believe, by Tom Fitton, as well as other groups, investigative reporters. Anyway, back to this. Then they go on to say the U.S. Senate Republicans published a report last month based on the investigation, blah, blah, blah. They found... Uh, Hunter Biden's business made State Department officials work, I think they mean look awkward, not work awkward. They found no evidence that Joe Biden acted inappropriately. Again, that report came out before this information about the laptop came out. That's a whole nother problem right now, is that the FBI had this laptop from December of 2019 and did not bring it forward during this investigation of which this report they mentioned was the outcome of. So this is a very misleading comment by the USA Today reporter um, because they know the timeline. Yes, this report came out. Uh, there were pieces of data in there that were awkward. Uh, that this Something seemed fishy about it. 
uh, how does this guy make this much money a month? I mean, how many Americans, I think the median income is less than $83,000 a year. So how does a person like Hunter Biden make $83,000 a month? Something is fishy with that. They didn't have the evidence, but now the evidence is out. So USA Today should correct this article and actually put a note in here that the report was published, this investigation was performed prior to this information of the laptop coming to light. Um, then they go on. They showed up uh, with evidence they said was involved in a crime. Again, this was all part of turning over the official hard drive, I believe, or their uh, possession of it once they saw additional information. I've heard, I haven't seen proof yet of that, but I've heard there was additional information that they found that they felt like additional resources needed to see. Um, and this could be related to some of the photos, um, drug or um, sexual photos that were involved. I'm not going to comment on the uh, ages of the women. I haven't seen them myself. But I believe that that was why they turned over additional copies to the local police department um, to note so that they had copies for the crimes as well. The other thing I notice on here is some, uh, just to comment more on the pages layout. As you get down here, they put on here the contributing writers. Um, and then they have a link in here between the contributing writers and when the article, the information about the article, when it was published um, and updated right here, this section. So if you look at between the end of, oops, sorry, between the end of the article and this final information, they put a link in here. 19 women have accused Trump of sexual misconduct. Here's what their stories have in common. So here's an example. If you want to understand why those of us who no longer trust the media um, again, they think you're stupid. They published this. You can see it right here, eight hours ago. Uh, eight hours ago. And the information I just talked about was released yesterday. The FBI, the Justice Department have already come forward. There's already copies out there, official copies of the wire transfer information that had to go to the U.S. government when it transferred from a foreign government uh, to the U.S. account, all of that information is already out there. They've already come forward and said this is not part of a disinformation campaign. Uh, and breaking news tonight, and granted this was after they published this article, um, but now they've come forward saying that um, the laptop was actually part of a money laundering investigation. So the FBI has come forward. This is part of a money laundering investigation uh, after they got the laptop in December of 2019. But again, why did the FBI not bring any of this forward when they knew that the Senate Republicans were going through this investigation a few months ago? Um, something's fishy there again as well. The FBI covering for the Bidens, they knew this data was there. They knew that perhaps they weren't finished with their investigation, but they should have at least come forward and um, provided some kind of a statement that, yes, we're in possession of this, there's potential information, our investigation is not complete. And perhaps they wouldn't have wrapped up the final report yet and waited for further information. Uh, but again, this is today's media. Thank you and good night. Again, I'm going to share this, add your comments. If you dispute anything I've said, that's fine. Um, I actually watch all news outlets to get all sides of the stories. I try to research my own information before I publish anything. I'm welcome for your, you know, to your, open and welcome to your feedback in the comments. Thank you.